Hey everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of Pitch Tank, where I will be walking through one of my pitches for a knowledge graph solution. And I have anonymized this. This is a, a project that I worked on years ago, but it was highly successful. Once it went live, it was uh, generating $500,000 a year in additional revenue for the company uh, that utilized this solution. So I can't guarantee those kind of results, nor can I guarantee if you listen to my advice here that you're going to get your pitch accepted. However, I have used this many times. This is um, similar to the one pager that AWS recommends to use, but I have used the one pager framework and updated it for some of these data projects. And I hope that you can benefit from that too. Also, there is an exciting announcement that I'm going to make here, and that is there is a link down below. If you want to use this, this framework, um, there's directions in that link uh, that you can just use that to step you through this process that we're going to go over in today's video. You can use this to get your thoughts in order for your own pitch, or you can actually submit your pitch in that survey and I will review it live, which is why you wanna make it anonymous, uh, but it's a way to get some cool peer review from myself and some of my friends in the industry who I will also be asking to help review these. You will also be able to ask questions live. And even if I don't select one of your pitches, you can still show up live and still ask me questions. It's going to be a fun time. So the live sessions are going to be uh, the last Thursday of every month. And I'm thinking that I'm going to do it around noon Eastern. Uh, and if there are better times for those that are uh, global, please leave that down in the comments below so I can think about having another session. And if you can't show up, these are recorded so you can watch it later. All right, so with that, Let's go get started in my six step process to making a one pager for your data pitch. All right, so five rules to get us started. So the first thing is we're gonna work backwards. We're going to start from what is the desired experience? Tell me the story. And you're going to lead through um, almost as if you're working backwards in the document. And when you actually write the document, you're gonna put it in the right order. So we're gonna go through that as we go. The next thing is keep it simple. CEOs and stakeholders, they don't have a lot of time and they don't have a lot of patience. So make sure you don't use too much jargon. Uh, I like to use the fifth grader or grandma scenario. If one of those two in your lives uh, can, can understand in general what you're talking about, you're pretty good with, with your pitch. Now, we all have some technical things, especially when you get to the how statement. Um, but again, try to keep it without jargon. Uh, don't use too many acronyms. And along those same lines is the next rule, which is don't make it fluffy. You really want to go through this and take out as many words as possible. You want to be clear, concise, um, use the, the free tool Grammarly where you can actually, it, it can help you um, with your writing style. You want this to be very clean and crisp. And I know I certainly like to use filler sometimes when I'm writing uh, to chain sentences together. Uh, don't do that here. And a lot of people in the business community want to use bullet points. Again, if, if it's going to convey something really effectively, then yeah, try to use those bullet points, uh, but try to use them uh, not as liberally as you as you normally do today, uh, because this all needs to fit on one page. Yeah, one page. It's pretty hard. It's pretty hard, but it will help you actually take out some of the fluff. Don't share any sensitive information uh, if you are submitting the form to me. Uh, we are all going to be working for Acme Inc. Uh, that's to protect you and potentially the customers or companies that you work for. And the last thing is ideally you have done some uh, precursor work to this. Why is this solution on your radar? That doesn't mean you have to do a full blown POC. It doesn't mean you have to have all of the data already figured out, but having some semblance of an idea as to why this solution versus another is usually a good course of action. So if you have those numbers, make sure that you put those into your pitch 
Again, if you're giving it to me, make them anonymized. Um, but if you don't have those numbers, um, you do want to have some kind of projection at the very least to show your stakeholders that you've done your homework. All right, so let's get into each section. All right, so paragraph five is going to be two sentences. Most of these uh, segments are going to be two to three sentences. So here's where you tell me the story. What's the narrative? What is the desired journey for your customer, whether they're internal or external? Here you wanna make sure that you're talking about how the customer is going to interact or find your solution. And this is where you really wanna show your passion for the customer. So often in technology, we want to talk about um, the, the cool things that we can do. And that's great. That passion is fabulous. Please don't lose it. But also don't lose the fact that you're doing this for an end user. And it's their needs that you really want to showcase here. All right. So the next is paragraph two, where you're talking about the opportunity or the problem, and you have three sentences to do this. Now, be cautious. You don't want to badmouth a current solution or something that's already being done. You, you know, having that negativity comes across in your verbiage, and it usually, even if your stakeholders would agree with you, doesn't look that good. So here's where you're going to paint the picture of who the customer is. If they're internal stakeholders, name who they are, which teams, which departments. If they're external, who, what persona are, are, are they? Do you have persona where you work? Those are usually a, a good resource to use for this. So here's where you're going to talk again from the customer's perspective. What's their pain? What are they struggling with today? And keep in mind, you're not going to say the customer needs a knowledge graph. <laughs> That's a solution looking for a problem, not a problem looking for a solution. So be very careful that you don't do that. And when you're presenting something that's not necessarily an existing problem, you could be looking at it from a customer's perspective that they, the customer doesn't get to expose to something. They don't understand something or they have no idea that your company offers something because they simply can't find it, or they don't know it exists. Some of those things, like not being able to take advantage of something that your company does is also a good problem statement. But you wanna make sure that you have done market research or customer research, even in small pockets, to understand, you know, is this something that they're going to gravitate towards? If you have real data, make sure you add that in Every single time you have an opportunity to put real actual numbers and data into your pitch, you should do so. And this is another area you, you need to talk as if you're talking to that customer. If you were talking to them, you wouldn't be talking about how you needed to have an RDF database that had an ETL that went into Athena. I don't know anything about that. So instead, you could say something like, well, we need to be able to serve you up with information from multiple uh, shopping centers in one central location so that you can find the item without having to go to 20 different areas to find it. Isn't that what I just said? Yeah, that's what I just said. It's from the customer standpoint. All right, so next is paragraph four, and this is again two sentences. This is your value proposition, the why. Why are you even doing this? So this, again, if you're talking as if to a customer, you're not going to say, we're gonna get 3% more uh, value out of your shopping experience with us. <laughs> you're not gonna tell a customer that. But what is it that impacts that customer that they would want to spend more money with you or, or interact with your product more? That's what you're trying to say here. This is going to give people um, better recommendations for flavors of beverages that we already know they love. That's the customer messaging. Now, you can also say in your pitch to your business stakeholders, and we project that this is going to increase sales by 5%, right? You're going to have those projections in there, but you never want to forget who your eventual audience is, and that is the customer. So why and how does it affect your business specifically? Those are the main things you want to convey here. The next paragraph is number three, 
And this is probably most data people's favorite paragraph. And you do get three sentences for this one. And that is the how. How are you going to solve for this? But remember, we're not going to be using jargon here. This is the pitch. This is not the architectural design meeting, right? So you're not going to be going through all those kind of details. You want to convey that you've done your due diligence. You understand how um, this is going to work in a sketch form, right? So sketch it out for your business stakeholders. You do have the option of putting an appendix in where you would have some of those architectural designs and some of those other things, but here is not the area to describe it. Here, you're really just talking about what do you propose to do to solve for the problem that we went over in paragraph two? So think about it almost as if, if you're using agile, it's more like epic or capability level. What do we as Acme Inc strive to do to help with that customer problem. That's really what you're focusing on here. The time to write uh, features and user stories is not in this area. Moving into paragraph one, and you do this as almost one of the very last steps in this process because all the paragraphs that we've worked on should help you understand the most a concerted and focused way of describing what is this product? What does it do for our customers in our business? What's the due date? What are the projections? I'm, your stakeholders are not going to read past the first paragraph. That's what you really want to focus on here is what, if you had five seconds in an elevator with them, would you say? That's what you're going to say here. And make sure you don't bury the lead. The thing that is the most compelling and the most um, interactive with your product or that's going to make the biggest impact, that has to be the very first sentence, not the last, even if you only have three sentences here. All right now, moving into the last two areas is paragraph six. What are you asking for? This is your pitch and you want people to understand what your idea is, but are you asking for resources? Are you asking for money? Are you asking for time? Are you asking for permission to continue investigations? Whatever it is that you're really wanting your main stakeholders to, um, to understand what you're asking for, that's where you put this. It sometimes isn't as clear to the stakeholders. I've been in many meetings where we get through a whole presentation and the CEO looks at me and says, so that's great what do you want me to do? Because they're very important people. You're asking them for something. Make sure you know what it is here. So this is going to be the very first thing that you have on your page, but it is the last thing that you should write. It should clearly convey what is the product and how does it impact the business? That's it. Very clear. No hows, no what's the problem. Just we have this idea, it's a better recommendation engine for beverages, and it's gonna give us this for our business, maybe five to two to five percent um, increased revenue. That's it. That's gonna grab their attention. And that is the main goal, is grab their attention. You want a hook to get them to read the rest of this document and potentially show up to your presentation where you go into more detail. All right, so I hope this walkthrough was helpful. Again, remember, if you want supporting documents, that would go into an appendix or, or something at the end of your document. Uh, but this should give you a good framework for a pitch. So if you are interested in sharing your pitch with me, submit the pitch, reviewing your pitches, yours. Yes, yours, you've been thinking about it. You know you wanna submit it, you need some help. Go ahead, submit it with the link below. The directions that I'm going over in this video are also in that form. So even if you don't want to submit your pitch to me, you can still use that form to help you structure your own pitch. All right, so with that, I wanna thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this encourages you to go out and try this on your own because this series is hoping going to last at least the whole year. Uh, so with that, uh, I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.